Ralph here, and welcome to True Power Trumpet Fitness here on Fabulous Friday in Connecticut. Did you have a good week? I had an awesome week. Even though I didn't play two days, I know I had double C's, so as I said, when you have double C's, life's good. Downhill from there. Anyway, you saw the thumbnail. Teacher, e uh, student emailed me last night, night before, whatever. Yeah, I get it. Play in the happy zone. If one note is right, work from there. I get it. How do you know if it's right? The tone will tell you. We'll talk about it in a minute. Okay? Let me honk a little bit. I played about two hours today, which is a lot because I haven't barely played a note all week. So let's see if I got anything left in the tank. Life is good, baby. Now, how do you know if it's right? Let me answer a question with a question. I had never heard of, what's his name? Hang on, Vlado, what's his last name? Uh, company. Okay? Never heard of him before. A well-meaning uh, viewer of the... the um, of the channel, sent this, check this guy out. You can see the tongue through his teeth, blah, blah, blah. I listened to two measures. This guy's spectacular. This guy's spectacular. If you know my initial thing from listening to it, I wasn't sure if it was a legitimate double C or not. It turned out to be one. But this guy, you knew it. Immediately, this guy was great. Okay? First time you heard Maurice Andre, how'd you know he was great? How about Harry James recording? How'd you know it was great? Horse Fisher. How do you know? The tone will tell you. The tone will tell you. Okay? And when the tone combined with the feel that is going on, you know you've got it. One way or the other, you have two things going there. The, the audio of the tone and the physio physiological thing with the feel. Okay? Now let me talk about tone for a minute. Guys, for my money, and tone is subjective, okay, so I'm, I'm just going to give you my idea. I'm looking for three things in a tone. Now, you think about the guys that I just love, okay? Maurice, Harry, Horst, Maynard, Herseth, Harry Glantz, Mel Broyles, John Ware. Three things. Centered. The tone is centered, pure, and brilliant. Okay? The center, guys, it has to be centered. If it's not centered, it's not in tune. And guys, you can't play with anybody. It just has to be that way. Now, you jazz guys, you're into Miles Davis thing or something like that. You're into a, a new thing. Got it. Got it. But, guys, if you're going to go out in that jungle called the music business, as Mel would say, Guys, you have to be able to play in tune with people or it ain't going to work. It's just not going to work. And it has to have a center of pitch or there's, there's no intonation. Pure. Now, once again, if you're into a funky thing, a fuzzy thing, uh, you know, because you jazz and all this sort of stuff and all that, got it. Got it. But generally speaking, there's no room for air, fuzz, grain in any tone. Okay, if you're out there in the music world, okay, Mel Broyles once told me, speaking of Mel, says, Ralphie, you go out in that jungle called the music business and they got you by the balls. 
He says, this guy right here, the maestro, you have to do whatever he wants you to do. And guys, if he doesn't like the smoke and everything in, in, in the sound, you can't get it. Okay? Now, jazz interpretation, got it. But generally speaking, centered, pure, and brilliant. Guys, you listen, you just take those guys that I just love. There is a brilliance of the tone. It's a brilliance of the tone that just carries to the end, and that is sparkle. Why in the world, if you're playing the king of instruments, wouldn't you want to play with brilliance? Gerard Schwartz came right out and said, I don't want to sound like a trumpet. I want to sound like a bassoon. And he did that. And he didn't last five minutes in the New York Philharmonic. He didn't get tenure. Okay? And I couldn't never understand, why would you play the trumpet if you wanted to sound like a bassoon? Okay? Different video. Okay? But, listen, for all Gerard Schwartz's technique, there was no center purity and brilliance. None. It was all fluffy and fuzzy and sounded like a bassoon. He did it. He, he achieved what he set out to do. Okay? But guys, now here's the deal. Center pure and brilliance, that's fine. But that is what you hear. Now when you are listening to Maurice, when you're listening to Maynard, whatever, you can hear it, but you can't feel it. Now when you are playing, that tone that we're after corresponds with a feel. And once you put two and two together, with my tongue here, it's going to sound that way. And when my chops feel like this, it's going to sound centered. Then you got it. Then you got it. Okay? And all you have to do is keep that feel in the other registers I told you. Middle C, high C, double C. Double C. It's not this, middle C, high C. It doesn't change. It's the same feel, just more compression. And once you correspond those two together, you got it. Now, what came first, the chicken or the egg? When you start to crash, what came first? Who knows? For me, I get the feel first. I can feel, the, I can feel it starting to crash before the tone starts to suffer. Okay, I think that's universal, but it doesn't have to be. But I usually feel it first, and I stop before, especially in practice. Definitely in practice. Okay, some of you, you it, this tone might suffer, start to suffer before you actually feel it. It doesn't matter one way or the other. But when you lose the tone and the feel, they'll they'll, they'll go together. You're not going to have a great feel, and the tone stinks. It's not going to happen. If you have a great feel and the tone stinks and there's something wrong with your feel. See what I'm saying? So you can tell yourself. Now, after a while, once you start tra training your ear to that, you can hear it a mile away. When you go to a job, when you go to a rehearsal, when you go to a concert band a performance area, you can hear it. Oh, he's good up to a high C. Then he loses the compression. Oh, he's way off. Oh, man, who sounds great? Now, that's it. That's it. The tone will tell you. And guys, as long as you adhere to that, centered, pure, and brilliant, in all dynamic levels, the trumpet world is yours. And I'm telling you guys, there is so little difference between a middle C and a double C. All right? Anyway, short week. We'll be back to it on Monday. We'll be back to the grind. You spit buzzing? That's another thing, guys. Center, pure, and brilliant in your spit buzz, too. Absolutely. If it sounds all tense and all that sort of stuff, guys. And that's another thing. That's another thing. Guys, it has to be relaxed. It has to be relaxed. I, I'm not beating a dead horse. Well, I am. But this, you can hear it. You can hear it. It's not right. Now, I know most of you have never heard of Eric Parks before I put that little clip down last week. Could you not hear? Now, he wasn't playing out of the staff in, in the first, first how many bars. 
of ice castles. You could hear it. He could play that up to two hours. You could hear it. Set in pure brilliance and no strain whatsoever. None. Vlado, no strain whatsoever. Herseth, guys, anybody that's trying to sell you a gadget, say no. And if you have the gadget, throw it away and life's lesson. Okay, anyway, we'll talk on Monday. Eat and drink your fruits and vegetables and live your life with true power. Love you all. Thank you.